So the problem is to synthesize this dipeptide, synthesize the dipeptide. So um, looking this up, or tripeptide. So um, what's the name of this one? Lu Lucy? Yeah. Is that Lucy? Yeah. Yeah. One, oh, two, and that's another Lucy. question I had. Did they make a mistake and for the phenyl forgot a CH2? Yeah, maybe. That's right, because this is not a standard amino acid, is it? Um, of course, they might have been just using, um, you know, just because something is not naturally occurring doesn't mean you can't make it. So um, it's not uh, necessarily a mistake. So this is not phenylalanine, you're right. So it's just a non-naturally occurring amino acid. So I don't know whether it's a mistake or not. Yeah, because he, in his hand, that was his exact answer. So I'm Oh, this is his answer. Yeah. Oh, okay, so then it's a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so much for that. So. so they were trying to make phenylalanine? I'm assuming that. Yeah, okay. Uh, and this is lysine. Okay, so um, they suggested that first they were going to put together the phi and lice. So in order for that to work... It doesn't matter which two you add first, as long as you protect the sides and stuff? Um, like if you do lu and phi and then lu and phi plus lice? So if you did lu and phi first, then you would have to deprotect this carboxy end. And then you could put this in. Yeah, it, it seems like you could do it. So they decided though to add the phi and the lice first. Now they need to protect, so that what they want to have happen is this. They want this nitrogen to attack this carboxy, right? So first thing they have to do is protect this nitrogen so it doesn't become nucleophilic. And we saw that one way to do that was with BOC. So they added the BOC here. Uh, anyone else that we have to protect? Well, we don't want this nitrogen to attack the carboxy in another lysine. So we have to protect the carboxy in the lysines. And they used, uh, what did they use to protect the carboxy in uh, the lysines here? Uh, Chert butyl, a, a butyl group? Yeah. So I think we saw last time how we can make these into chert butyl esters. And that will protect this. That way we know that we're not going to have to worry about one of the lysines attacking the carboxy of another lysine. However, there's still one thing that we have to protect. What we want is for this nucleophile to attack this electrophile, but this is also a nucleophile. Oh, that's what they protected. That they thought it was the... This is also a nucleophile in the side chain, right? Mm. Now, just, now, lysine doesn't know that this is the side chain and this is the main chain. They, the lysine doesn't know that we want this nitrogen to react and not this one, so they have to protect this nitrogen over here as well. Um, so I guess they used CBZ for that? Yeah. Um, the interesting thing, though, Wait, is... It, no, maybe because it's in parentheses? Pardon? It was, like, that was the only one that was in parentheses, so... Yeah, maybe that means it's protecting the side chain. Yeah. So we're, we're doing this synthesis from protected amino acids. So we have to actually add the CBZ up here. Like this. So that, I guess that kind of answers your question. You were asking yeah. why they needed the other protecting group. So the key thing is, sometimes you have to protect the side chains too. We didn't have time to talk about that last time, but sometimes you have to protect the side chains too. Now, fortunately, um, they, didn't, they didn't ask you to show how to protect them, did they? They just said you could start with them protected. Because yeah. actually, I don't, know, I don't know a good way to add the CBZ to make sure you protect the side chain and not this nitrogen. <laughs> I don't know how to do that, but they said you could start with them already protected. So if we just assume it's already protected, now we'll get this connection over here. Well, how do you specify in your answer that CBZ is protecting that NH and not the main chain? What is it? You could just write it out like this. That's why I wrote it out like this. Um, but 
I think you were saying that they did it in parentheses. Yeah, that was the only one they did in parentheses. So maybe that's an indication for the side chain. But you know, really, the safest thing is just to write out the structure. And then you can show where the CBZ is so that they know that you know what you're doing. All right, I, we should talk about this a little bit more. So these two would attach, uh, attack each other now. Now we put the phi and the lice together. And then the next thing that they had to do was um, deprotect this nitrogen. Um, yes. All right. Now notice, do you see why they used different protecting groups for this nitrogen and yeah, for this nitrogen? Yeah, if you use the same right. one, then you deprotect both of them. That was a question you guys asked me last time. What, what's, why do we need more than one protecting group for nitrogens? And I kind of floundered and didn't have a very good answer. Well, one reason is that way you can put different protecting groups on different nitrogens. And then when you do a deprotection, you can only deprotect the one that you want. So we, um, I forget what the deep protection things are, but we don't want to deep protect this side chain. We just want to deep protect this. So we use whatever it is that deep protects BOC. What, it's TFA, that's what they say. Yes. So we use the TFA. That deep protects this nitrogen. TFA is the CF3COOH. Right. Oh, that's the trifluoroacetic acid. OK, so we use the trifluoroacetic acid to get rid of the BOC. All right, and then to add the leucine, uh, now we have to protect this nitrogen. Well, you're allowed to just start with the, something on there that you want. So they started with this with the CBZ on it. Thank you. They put this protecting group here for the CBZ. And then they had these two attack each other. And we still have this nitrogen protected, so we're still in good shape. And they used an activator. They used DCC to have these react with each other. And you need an activator for the first one, too, don't you? Yeah, they used DIC for the first one. But I don't know whether I think you can use either for either. So for the first peptide bond, they use DIC. Here they're using DCC. So that'll put. these two connected. And now uh, all that's left is to deprotect everybody. But the only protecting groups we have left are the CBZ. Yeah. The only protecting groups left are the CBZ, and it looks like you can hydrogenate those. So then they used a hydrogenation to get rid of these. Uh, that's pretty cool. All right, so what, what's the lesson here? You have to watch out for side chains that have to be protected. So which side chains are those? First of all, lysine, because that has a nucleophilic nitrogen. And also, which are the side chains that have carboxy groups on them? Remember, those have to be protected too, the carboxy groups. Well, if you look at your table, those are the aspartic acid and the glutamic acid. So you have to watch out for those as well. Lysine has a nucleophilic nitrogen amine on its side chain, so that has to be protected in synthesis. And aspartic acid and glutamic acid have carboxy groups on their side chain. So you'd have to use carboxy protecting groups if you were doing a synthesis with them. So the second time when we protected the Lou, we used the same CTZ that, like the same protecting group as that. Right. Basically. Okay. That was more efficient because then when we did the deprotection, we could yes. zip them both off at the same time. On the other hand, if we were trying to make a tetrapeptide, we would want to we, we would want to use to continue to use a different protecting group here. Um, but when you're doing your last step, it's more efficient to use the same protecting group on both nitrogens, so then you can then reveal them at the same time. All right, so watch out for lysine, aspartic acid, and glutamic acid. By the way, how about asparagine and glutamine? Do those have side chains that have to be protected? Well, if you look at asparagine and glutamine in the table, those look exactly like aspartic acid and glutamic acid, but these have amide side chains. So those don't need to be protected. And as we've seen, amides are not reactive. Uh, I think you might have seen in one of the other videos, I was warning the students not to confuse aspartic acid and asparagine and glutamic acid and glutamine. Um, they have the same number of carbons in the side chain, but these have carboxy side chains and these have amide side chains. Well, these need to be protected and these don't. Makes sense. Okay. So it looks like you can be pretty sure you're going to see one of these tripeptide synthesis problems on the exam. Yeah. That answer that question? Yeah, perfectly. Oh wait. But then Yeah, I think you would have to use the They couldn't have used they couldn't have used the tertinol to protect the carboxylic side because uh -huh. when you the deprotecting for Bach is the same deprotecting for the tertinol. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think did I use fentanyl? No, I used I use 
Well, the, the deprotecting for BOC that they used is the trifluoroacetic acid. I don't and think, it didn't get rid of the terpetyl? I don't think that's a deprotection for terpetyl. I think the way you get rid of the terpetyls is just like a hydrolysis or something. No, it says Yeah, I think we were getting most of them in the lecture. 